My name is Arthur Gervais. I am um, basically building the liquidity network. Uh, it's an off-chain scaling solution for payments. And will you be talking about that here at EdCon? Uh, yes, uh, I will be giving a full speech. Okay, great. So what, what's the main problem that you're solving with liquidity networks? Right. I guess most of the audience is aware that blockchains don't scale. So Bitcoin or Ethereum, they support maybe 10 to 20 transactions per second. Uh, in my PhD, I've shown that you can actually extend the parameters so that maybe you can reach about 100 transactions per second. But still, this doesn't, doesn't suffice. You won't be reaching visa level transaction speeds, which is like roughly 50,000 transactions per second. Um, so in order to scale, there are different approaches that are being worked on and there are many excellent teams that have yeah, uh, different solutions. Uh, so let me categorize. So the first solution, for first kind of class of solutions would be another type of uh, proof of stake, uh, proof of work. So different consensus algorithms. Um, so this is one class. The second class I would call is uh, sharding. So you partition the network into like smaller pieces and within this smaller partition you can reach consensus faster, but ultimately you still need to reach consensus among different shards, right? And the third class is off-chain, uh, which I'm working on and which liquidity is all about, is to, to build off-chain, uh, uh, yeah, an off-chain topology for payments. Yeah, and so the big picture problem is scaling, so that's the problem on the Ethereum level side, but for the end user they have the problem of the fees they have to pay, right? Right. Uh, yeah, but naturally, if, if you are using a medium that doesn't have a high bandwidth because it doesn't support many transactions and many people are going to join in, then the competition is growing high and then obviously the, the transaction fees are going to rise because who pays more, he gets a spot. Right. So how, does, how do fees work with liquidity payments? So in liquidity network, uh, we do not require any fees for regular users. So there's a certain cap on the number of transactions that a regular user does. So a power user or people that are going to use an API or that want to use service level agreements such as a guaranteed uptime, uh, they're going to need to be paying for the network access, but regular users don't have to pay anything. That's good news for me. <laughs> okay. okay, so at Chronologic, we're very interested in time-based problems. Can you tell me, have you thought through the issues of the, the dimension of time on the blockchain? Yeah, so time is a very, uh, I would say, huh, how to call it? It's a rather um, relative property, right? Uh, time is like in relation to whom? Um, so in the blockchain, blockchain is a time stamping service. That's it core, that's what the blockchain is, right? It's literally just time stamping. Um, but it doesn't, at least proof of work blockchains such as Bitcoin and Ethereum don't provide a very precise time. Right. Um, if you look at the uh, Bitcoin block uh, distribution, you, know, you will see that it follows a Poisson process and the, the, the time that the block is found is on average 10 minutes, but it could very well happen that you find like a few blocks like within a few seconds and then you're waiting for like almost for an hour for no, not finding a block. I think I checked actually and at the time I checked, there was like no block for over one and a half hours once, which is quite a long time for a payment system to, right. to settle in Bitcoin. Ethereum is a bit faster because it has a smaller time uh, interval, uh, but the smaller time interval brings other issues with it. For example, that you have more overhead in terms of uh, blockchain growth as a whole. And this is actually one of the reasons why Ethereum is also less scalable than Bitcoin. Right. I'm glad that we have PhDs like you trying to solve these problems. I mean, it's res <laughs> researchers in general uh, really like these decentralized networks because they bring up so many more questions, right? right? If you have a central bank, you know very well how many transactions you can push through there. You know what the privacy guarantees are. But once you like distribute this into a network of peers that you actually don't know, they can join and leave at any time, uh, there are so many questions popping up and researchers just enjoy that. It's very cool what you're doing with liquidity. How can people learn more about that? So liquidity.network uh, is the website. Uh, there's a working wallet already there. We have an uh, invite-only beta for a mobile wallet, which is operational on Android, uh, open now. Uh, so we're actually announcing this at AdCon here. Uh, so yeah, people can actually have now their, their crypto off-chain and on-chain in the same wallet and send Ether for free. You sold me. That's awesome. Okay, thank you and good luck with your speech. Thank you so much.